All right, so how do we get bookings for, you know, get, get clients? <laughs> That's a good, good overall question. Uh, this is a big topic. Uh, I have written many blog posts about it. I have uh, taught a whole entire course on called Authentic Client Enrollment. So I'll just give you a really quick summary of whatever's coming to my mind right now. <laughs> it might not be my perfect system, but uh, what's coming up to my mind, I think my dog just walked in or out. So I'm kind of surprised the door just opened by itself. Uh, so basically we get clients when potential clients find out that we have a service that they want, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just to be really basic about it, you know, like one-on-one. And so, but there's a lot there in that one-on-one -on -one statement when potential clients find out we have what they want. It's a brilliant framework, actually. Uh, so let's talk about that, right? Like potential clients. Okay, so uh, what are who are potential clients? Those are people that have inquired with you in, in sometime in the past, could have inquired with you today or inquired with you five years ago. Those are all potential clients. Potential clients are also people who have worked with you in the past. Uh, they've signed up for a session or a package or maybe even worked with you for years. Um, and they are still a potential client because if they've completed, they might want to come back and work with you. So write these down, right? These are all different categories of people to reach out to. Um, potential clients are also the friends of those two categories I just named, right? The friends of the people who have inquired with you and the friends of the people who have worked with you, right? Potential clients are also... Um, Basically, anyone you are able to easily reach through social media is your potential client or a friend of somebody like that. Okay, so when you post on Facebook, when you post on LinkedIn, when you post on uh, Instagram, when you make a video on YouTube, well, whatever you have that social media that you can post to, everybody watching that is either a potential client or know somebody who is a potential client of yours. So all those categories, right, those potential clients. When potential clients find out, okay, it's so a find out, let's talk about the find out, is how do they find out, right? How do they find out? Well, they find out when you, typically, they don't usually find out because they wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh my gosh, I need to go to this person's website, right? <laughs> they're not going to remember you. Even if they're, even if, the funny thing is like, even if they're like a friend of yours, um, most of our friends don't remember what we do, even when they need it. That's the sad part of it. Even when they wake up in the middle and I go, I need somebody to help me with my somatic issues. They don't think of Stephanie Winters. You know, I'm talking to Stephanie right now. Like, they, right? They, they don't, they, they just like, even though they're like, they just talked to you yesterday, you had lunch yesterday or whatever, unless you talked about somatic issues. They're not even going to, like, if when they finally hear that you do it, like, oh, my God, well, duh, you know, they're going to have that moment. So they need to find out what you do. And how do we, how do we do that? Well, we do that by emailing them. Hey, George, do you know anybody with somatic issues? Oh, my God, I just thought about that last night, 3 a.m. Well, I didn't even think about you, <laughs> you know. So that's synchronicities like that happen when you email people. So when was the last time you emailed your friends to say, do you know anybody who has these issues? Most of us, the answer is, uh, I can't remember the last time, right? And that's a sad thing. Like we should be emailing our friends every six months. Hey, do you know anybody? George, do you know anybody with somatic issues? Yeah, I was just talking to somebody. <laughs> or yes, I will keep it in mind, you know, when, when I hear from somebody. You see what I mean? Like when was the last time you emailed your friends? Well, how many friends did you email? 50 friends, you know, if you can. If you can't email 50 friends, email 25 friends. If you can't email 25 friends, email 12 and a half friends. <laughs> you know, that's really the answer. Like most of us don't even do this. Most of us don't keep in touch with our friends. Yeah, we might keep in touch for like, hey, how's your, you know, how's your dog buddy? But we don't keep in touch with, hey, do you know anyone with these issues? Because I need some clients right now. That is totally acceptable to, to email your friends if you're not a marketing coach. If you're not a marketing consultant. If you're not a business consultant, it's totally acceptable to email all your friends saying, I am bad at marketing. Do you know anybody? Because I need clients right now. Totally acceptable. I can't do that. 
If I email you and go, I'm bad at marketing. Do you have any clients for me? People are like, George, that's not what you do for a living. It's not, you want you to help people get clients and you know you're bad at it. And I can make a joke of it, of course. I can say, yeah, you know, a prophet is never welcome in his own home kind of thing, right? <laughs> you know, I could say, I can make jokes like that, but it, it's kind of awkward for me to reach out. But you can, right? Now, if I had a, whatever business I have, people know me as a marketing guy now. It's embarrassing for me to reach out like this. But you can, if you're not a business expert, blessings, because you have that tool that I don't have. Okay. Um, but the other way to find out, right, find out about what you do is through content. If you post content on a regular basis related to what you do, if you deal with somatic issues and you post content about somatic issues, guess what? People are more likely to wake up at 3 a.m. and say, I have somatic issues. And I remember Stephanie just posted about that. It's more likely to have that connection. Even so, they might not even, they might not even make that connection. So not only do you post content on a regular basis about the things that you help people with, giving them some tips, giving them a story about it, whatever, but you also post on a regular basis your offer. Hey, everyone on social media, I have openings for clients on helping them with this or that. 80-20 um, rule, 80% of the time on social media, you're posting tips, stories, inspirations, ideas related to what you do, and 20% of the time you post, hey, I've got, I need clients. Hey, does anyone have any issues with this? Hey, I've got this program coming up. So 80-20 rule, literally. One out of every five posts should be, hey, I need clients. Hey, I've got anyone with, with issues like this. Hey, I've got a program coming up. Got it? Okay. So potential clients find out that you, out, you offer something. We really have talked about that, that they want, <laughs> that they want, right? Not, that, not what they need what they want, because what they want and what they need are very different. Because what they need is in your own head. You think, yeah, George, you need help with somatic issues. I have no idea. You know, I, not, I don't use that language and I might need help with that. You think I need help with that. But what I want is to figure out the, how to solve my neck tension. That's what I want. I don't know about somatic issues. But I know I, I have neck tension. So if you said, hey, anyone with neck tension, let's talk. Oh, yeah, that's me. You see, so when potential clients find out you've got something they want. There you go. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, if, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below and I will uh, comment briefly as well. So, follow up question is how do we? Uh, say that we need clients, we're looking for clients without seeming needy or desperate? Um, well, uh, that's a good question. And I think that most of the people you, you say that to are not going to think that you're needy or desperate. Um, unless you're, <laughs> which you're not going to do, unless you're saying, please, 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 I'm going to be put out on the street next month if you don't get me clients, which none of you are going to do that, which even if it might be true, don't say that. Um, <laughs> unless you're telling to your best friends, right? Like you're please, like, I literally need a thousand dollars, like tomorrow, like yesterday. So can you get me a thousand dollars? Somebody, you know, please pay me a thousand bucks. You know, some friends you can literally say that to, and they're like, I gotcha. I'll, let me, let me ask around kind of thing. Most people you can't say that to. So basically say, Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to announce that I've got some space for for working with clients right now so if you happen to know anybody who deals with uh, has some of these issues i i this is what i love doing you know i love working with people like that so send them my way i'll take good care of them that's the basic template that's the basic template so and then of course you should take that template and put it in completely in your own language i'm always very very careful i try to never i know all of you want me to give you the exact word that somehow triggers people to buy from you and there may be words like that out there, but they're almost always inauthentic to your own voice. This is why I don't, I don't like working with copywriters for my own stuff. And, and most people don't like working with copywriters because it comes out like markety language because somehow copywriters think there's some triggering words and it probably are. There's always ways to manipulate human beings. There's some trigger words that suppose trigger phrases that would get people to buy from you. Yeah, yeah, in the short term. But long term, it doesn't create a relationship. It, it, it creates inauthenticity and creates weirdness in any kind of relationship. 
customer relationship, audience relationship. So this is why I'm always very careful to say, here's a general gist you put in your own words.